Hi Pat, this is Jerry Phillips. I have uh, one of your senses here and I want to describe to you um, how you need to set up and operate them because uh, the target plug that you've got is extremely rough. Um, and here, here's a close-up picture of, of the, the pin, the end of the pin. It's just rough turned and because it's so rough, little shifts of the sensor changing the position it really makes a large change in the sensor's output unfortunately. Um, I know this is after the fact, but if, gee, these are pins, if you could, if they could be polished, that would be really nice. <laughs> we get very repeatable, consistent readings, but, you know, this is the actual pin, so we're going to, you know, try to do our best to make good measurements on this actual target. Now, the sensor, as you see here, there's input voltage power. We have two outputs we call SNR and out, which is the distance output. These are both voltage outputs that go from zero to five volts. On the side of the amplifier, you see the RC controls, and there's a separate control for that RC, and, I'm sorry, SNR voltage, and a separate control for the output, which we call Cal1. Now, the Cal1 control is what we're going to use to set the output of the sensor to be equal to 5.00 volts when the sensor is gapped to exactly one half inch. Now, uh, on, on, a, on a linear ball bearing stage here, we have your target pin, which is mounted in a compression fitting and clamped, and it's mounted you know, perpendicular to the, to the axis of motion. Uh, we have the sensor tip, uh, again, mounted perpendicular to the face of your target. And I'm going to run through a calibration first. Now, uh, the way we run through a calibration um, we have a control program that's going to bring the stage into contact with the target and then pull it away in steps. Okay, so now we have the stage set up. Uh, we're in contact with the probe and we're going to tell the computer to start running this calibration. So now you can see the stage is moving in steps. Each time this, the stage stops, we have a linear encoder on the side here, a four microinch encoder. So the, the, the PC reads the sensor output and the stage encoder values at each step and it's loading them into our, our file. Now when this is done, we'll, we'll be at a, exactly a one half inch gap from the sensor. And now if we could uh, pan over here to the screen, you could see the result of this calibration. Uh, we have from 0 to 500 mils, 0 to 5 volts up here. You can see the, the sensor is maximized at 5.131 volts. Now, with, the, with our program, we can set that to 5 volts, and like I just did. Uh, but over here, back to the sensor, what we need to do is, um, first of all, hook up the voltmeter to the sensor output and you can see it's it's reading that 5.131 volts so what what you want to do with every sensor that you, you you set up in your chambers is get to this Cal1 control and and in the sensors we've delivered to you this Cal1 control that may be uh, it may be blocked off if it is you just need to lift this label up and get it underneath it and you'll you'll get to this uh, little trim pot and we're going to set this output to as close to 5 volts as we could get it. And so let's say that's about as good as we're going to do here. So, All right. Yeah, I did pretty good. Okay, now what I want to show you, you see on the meter we're reading, you know, 5.003 volts. Now, if I shift the sensor just a tad, you see how much we change? Drop 400 millivolts, move back. <laughs> I move back to the same spot. Good. But anyway, so I'm going to show you, as I move across the face of the pin, there's some pretty large changes. So, for that reason, um, you know, we, we can't duplicate the, the positioning of the, the sensors over your pins, and 
or the or the, the surface of each pin from pin to pin. So I think the best thing for you to do is to go through this procedure where you install your sensor at each pin location, bring it into contact, make your move a half inch away, and use this Cal 1 control to set the output to exactly 5 volts, as close to 5 volts as you could get it. And then you'll be good to go. Uh, the SNR control has, has already been set up for all your sensors. You shouldn't have to make any adjustments. Uh, let me show you for the sensor we have here. I'll hook up the voltmeter to the SNR output. And you can see right now, with the output sitting at 5 volts, the SNR is at 3.4 volt, 3 volts, which is a, a nice value. Now I'm going to slide the probe in, close the gap, and as I close the gap, the SNR voltage it peaks out around 3.76, and as I get closer to the to the sensor, it just goes lower. So we we we've we've set these SNR voltages so that they peak out somewhere around between three and a half to four volts, which are, which is, is a nice safe value, uh, for good operation. So so that's pretty much what you need to do. Again, to repeat, just Make a move to a half inch gap, set the sensor output to using the Cal 1 control to precisely 5 volts, and then reset the gap to 2 volts, 2.5 volts, whatever you decide uh, is, a, is your starting point based upon the calibration charts, which again, if you look over here to the left, now this is the calibration chart um, <clears throat> which uh, we provided. So. Uh, depending on the motion of your pin, you know, I mean, if you start at a large distance and the pin uh, approaches the sensor, then you'll be dropping down in voltage as the gap gets closer. So we've provided a linear operating range, but from what I know, your sensors are going to be using pretty much the entire um, operating range, almost a whole half inch. But just to show you how we do the calculation, uh, if I click on this regression button here, I could select these limits. Uh, I've got uh, 78.96 or 79 mils on the low end, and we'll put uh, 244.2 on the high end. Now, what we've done here is define the linear range. The green lines here show deviation from a straight line plus or minus 1%. So um, now when I go to a summary page, Put a noise level of the sensor in, let's say five millivolts. This sensor serial number is 2182. Actually, we're going through a whole calibration here for you. Model number is RC171C6EQ. Send it to the clipboard, and we're going to bring this in to the spreadsheet, paste it in. And now, actually, if you, if you, are we looking at the chart now? I'm going to back up. Uh, the chart right now is showing uh, a calibration that was made uh, yesterday. And today, we just, we shifted to a, a little different position as I was playing with the sensor and did another calibration. And when you paste in, the, when I paste in the new data, look, notice the little shift in, in the sensor output. The, the sensitivity actually goes from 14.165 to 13.7. So that's uh, how much a change there was from the different pin positions. All right. Uh, and, and once more, if we look at yesterday's calibration, sensitivity is 14.165 millivolts per mil. And if we paste in the calibration that we just did today, you could see a slight change, a little drop in sensitivity, 13.72. So, you know, depending on the accuracy of your, your test and what you're looking for, um, you know, you may decide, you know, maybe this change is, is trivial to you. I mean, I don't know, but, uh, you know, from my point of view, to try to get the best data you, you can possibly get, you really need to do this one step of calibrating the sensor to, to set them at 5 volts for a half-inch gap. And then you'd be... Uh, ready to go. So uh, good luck. If you have any questions, uh, Brian will be visiting you and trying to help you out. And uh, hopefully between the two of you, it'll, things will work out. I'll be on vacation um, until the last week in June. And uh, I'll uh, give you a call that Monday on the 
think it's maybe the 27th and find out how things went for you. Good luck.